Hungarian folk tales. The poor man's nine hens and one cockerel. Once upon a time, there lived a poor man and his wife. And they had more children than there are holes in a sieve. The poor man only possessed two small oxen, and he went ploughing with them in the forest every day. He was ploughing there one day when he heard a kind of crying. A big brown bear was wrestling with a tiny rabbit. The poor man laughed heartily when he saw the peculiar sight, but this made the bear very angry indeed. You'll see, poor man, I shall eat you up, oxen, plough and all. This frightened the poor man who said, Oh bear, please don't eat me up, for I have a great number of children, and if I don't plough this field, there won't be any wheat, and then what will the little children eat? Please wait until the end of the day, when my ploughing will be done, and you can come here and eat me up, oxen, plough and all. Very well, the bear said, and it walked off into the forest. So the poor man went on ploughing, but he felt so sad that he did not know what to do with his sorrow. And as he stood feeling sad, a fox appeared. Hey, poor man, why are you so sad? How could I not be? And he told the fox about his promise to the bear. Oh, there's no need to be sad. What will you give me if I help you? Do you have chickens in your yard at home? As a matter of fact, we do. My wife keeps nine hens and a cockerel. Well, if you give them all to me, I shall tell you what to do. I'll happily give them to you, and you can come and collect them later today. Poor man, I shall return this evening and hide behind a big bush. And then, when the big brown bear comes, I will... Do you think that will work? It will. Mm, poor man, I have come to eat you up, oxen, plough and all. Very well, eat me. What's that noise, poor man? I don't know. Hunters might be coming with guns to shoot you. Oh, hide me somewhere. I'm so frightened. Here's a sack. Hide in here. So the bear hopped into the sack without a second word and the poor man tied the sack tight. Then the fox came out from behind the big bush. and it began to fill the sack. What's in the sack, poor man? Nothing but a big noggin of firewood. I don't believe it. But that's what's inside. Well, if it is a noggin as you say, chop it with your axe. So then the poor man hit the sack hard with his axe and the big brown bear was killed in an instant. Well then, poor man, you promised to give me nine hens and a cockerel and I shall go to collect them later tonight. So the poor man went home, unharnessed his oxen, went into the house, ate his supper and went to his bed for the night. All of a sudden, he heard a knocking on the door. Who's there? Tis I, the fox. I've come to collect my nine hens and a cockerel. Very well. Wait until I get up and put my trousers on. But the poor man had no intention of dressing, and instead he said to his children, Bark, children, bark! What was that? 
we forgot to lock our door before we went to bed and all the dogs came in from the yard to sleep under our bed. Now they can smell a fox and they want to eat you up. Oh, 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 hold them, poor man, let me run away. Bark louder. Woof, 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 woof. See, Fox, I have learned something from you after all, said the poor man. And he turned to the wall and fell fast asleep. And he and his wife and all their children lived happily ever after. Hungarian Folk Tales The Pelican Bird Once upon a time, there lived an old king, and the old king did not know whether to weep with sorrow or to weep with joy. My dear daughter, when I was young, I had a pelican bird that could sing so beautifully. And as long as I heard that pelican bird sing, I stayed forever young and forgot all my troubles in the world. But one day my pelican bird vanished overnight and I searched far and near to find it again, but sadly failed. And that is why I feel such sorrow. But I also feel great joy because in all my travels far and near, I have never seen a maiden fairer than you, my dear. Well, father dear, if that is so, I will not marry until somebody brings that singing pelican bird back to you. Oh, give it up, dear daughter, because you will die an old maid. No, father, I will keep my vow. So the beautiful princess announced to all the world that she would only marry the man who brought back her father's singing pelican bird. So princes arrived and were sent forth to search the four corners of the world, but they all returned without the singing pelican bird. A handsome young tailor lived in the royal court, who could not bear to see his sovereign look so sad. So he packed his bag with bread, bacon and onions, and set off in search of the singing pelican bird. The young tailor walked until he found himself in a dark forest where he met a grey-haired beggar and the beggar said, Give me a slice of bread and God will reward you. Very well, old man, here you are. I know that you have come to this place to find the pelican bird. Many young princes have passed through this forest and I asked them each for a slice of bread, but none of them helped me as you have. And they all went back to the palace empty-handed. A good deed deserves a just reward. The pelican bird is to be found beyond the vast ocean, but you cannot walk to this place. You need to go and see the old witch, who lives deeper still in the dark forest. Greetings, old lady. Do you enjoy good health? 
what brings you to this far and forgotten place? I'm on a quest to find a pelican bird that can sing beautiful songs and flew away beyond the vast ocean. But I intend to cross that ocean because my king cannot live without his beloved pelican bird. If you will lend me your horse, I promise that the pelican bird will make you a girl again. Go ahead and take my horse. It's tethered under the bridge. So the young tailor fetched the horse and saw it had a mane of gold. The horse suddenly spoke and said, Climb on my back, master. Master, I shall leave you now. You must travel on and ask about the whereabouts of the pelican bird, because one good question is worth a hundred bad guesses. Wait, I shall give you this whistle. If you're ever in trouble, blow it and I will appear. Very well, horse, and the horse vanished. So the young tailor walked and walked until he met an ancient old woman. Old lady, old lady, please show me the way to the pelican bird. I plan to take it back to my king, whose heart is half filled with sorrow since it left him. I know, my child, I'll happily show you the way. Do you see that distant forest? You will find the pelican bird stuck up in the highest tree, where the poor thing has been suffering all these long years. So the young tailor hurried to the distant forest and soon found the tallest tree. And there, sure enough, he sighted the pelican bird stuck up among its branches. He tried to climb the tall tree, but failed, and the young tailor was heartbroken. Did you call me, Master? Yes, I did. The pelican bird is up in the tree, but I cannot climb it. Worry not, Master. You just climb up on my back and we shall fly to the top of the tree. With one hand you can lift up the tree branch and with the other, take the bird and hold it good and tight. It took the young tailor a week and a day to journey back to the palace, where he tried to get the bird to sing for the king. Sing, pelican bird, we're home again at last. When they returned, the old king soon heard the pelican bird singing sweetly, and he was an old king no longer. Then they held a wonderful wedding feast, and all lived happily ever after. And that is where my story ends.
Hungarian folk tales. Dan the Dancer. The king mourned his beautiful wife for a year and a day. When his mourning was over, he had it announced all over the land that he would marry any maiden who could spin yarn of gold. One old woman heard this news and rushed home to her house to tell her ugly daughter. Well, my dear, could you spin yarn of gold out of string? Her daughter set about thinking and soon set her heart on becoming queen. Once, when her mother was away in the village, she shut all the doors, covered all the windows so as not to be seen by anybody, and began to spin yarn. She kept on at it for quite some time, but there was no way she could make yarn of gold out of old string. Oh, I can't go on like this. If someone taught me how to spin yarn of gold, I'd give him my body and my soul, even if he was the devil himself. Here I am, sweetheart. What do you wish? The girl told him what and asked him to teach her how to spin yarn of gold out of simple string. She said she'd give him anything he asked. I'll teach you if you give me your body and your soul in a year from now. The girl agreed. Sit here on this stool with your back to the door like me, you see. Then say three times, Devla, Devla di Sacco. Then the devil began to spin yarn and, believe it or not, yarn of gold came spinning off the spinning wheel. Then the girl too sat down on the little stool with her back to the door and repeated three times, Devla, Devla di Sacco. Then she set about spinning and, miracle of miracles, yarn of gold began to spin off the spinning wheel onto the spindle in her hand. Well, my dear, I'll leave you now, but I'll be back when the year has passed. Do you understand our bargain? I do, I do, but before you go, please tell me your name. I won't do that, but if you can guess, I won't take you away when the year's over. Then the girl carried on spinning until the candles had to be lit. And then her mother came home. Goodness, my dear, is what I see true? Can you really make yarn of gold out of old string? Yes, I can, Mother. Hurry right away and tell the king the news. The king found it very hard to believe. Well, Your Majesty, I swear upon my life it's true. Come and see for yourself. So the king set off to see for himself with six ministers, counts, barons and generals. Not even the old oven had ever seen so many lords of the land gather together before. It stood there gaping with its mouth so wide that it was unable to shut it ever again. Then the king and his lords all sat down and watched how the ugly girl spun yarn of gold out of string. The king was worried that he would have to wed such an ugly girl. But what else could he do? He sent a carriage drawn by four horses to fetch the girl, summoned a priest and married her right away. The king slowly became accustomed to his new wife's looks and soon he no longer saw her as ugly. They lived like this for quite some time, but as the days passed, the poor girl turned queen became sadder and sadder. What will become of me when the year is over? Both the king and the courtiers tried to cheer the queen up, but in vain. <laughs> then one day the king went out hunting with his men. He ordered his men to go right up to the top of the hill and set up camp under the largest tree. We have a problem, Your Majesty. We can't set up camp under the largest tree because a small man shaped like a monster has made a fire there. Maybe we shouldn't go there at all. On the contrary, we'll go and see who it is, even if it's the devil himself. And they reached the top of the hill and there they saw a fire. And around the fire, a tiny man dancing around a huge pot with an enormous wooden spoon. 
Burn fire, burn flame, in this pot is what I make. A beautiful bride I will take, and Dan the Dancer is no fake. As the king caught sight of him, he burst out laughing and went straight home to tell his wife so that she could have a good laugh too. And that's just what happened. The queen laughed so much that it seemed as though she had no worries in the world. Time went slowly by and the year she had bargained would soon be reached at noon that day. On the strike of twelve, just as the king and queen were about to eat a delicious bowl of soup, there was a knocking on the door. The queen could guess who it was. Who is it? It's me, sweetheart, the one who taught you how to spin yarn of gold out of string. The year's up and I've come to take you away. If you can say who I am, you can stay. You mean your name? It's Dan the Dancer. And to hell with you. Upon this, the little man burst with rage and slammed against the door and all that was left of him was a big blob of tar. Then the king asked his wife how she knew who the man was. In her great fright, she told him all that had happened. Well, my love, if you can still spin yarn of gold out of old string after this, you can stay. But if you can't, you must leave here and never return. So the woman sat down and said, Devla, Devla, Disako, and she began to spin. But it was no use. No yarn of gold would come off the spinning wheel. The woman had a fit, and in her rage, she flew against the door. There she turned into tar just like the devil. All the shoemakers and bootmakers went there from then on whenever they needed tar. And if I'm not mistaken, they go there still.